I see myself as an artisan who grows a colour and try to preserve this in a fast-paced world. I feel naked without my blue hands. It is a good conversation starter and it also acts like my name card. The vastness of the sky reminds me of how small and tiny we are in the world, just like speck of dusts. There was one night when I looked up into the sky, I could see the depth of it, the stars and the Milky Way. And so I liked the colour a lot and had this epiphany that nature takes place in different forms. And so I related it to indigo dye and that's why I decided to venture into the craft or the world of natural indigo. These are the dry indigo plant and as you can see the leaves, uh, they appear blue. So in that two weeks, we monitor the temperature and the pH value and only at the optimum conditions, the colour will be given birth. So I call these two weeks, like the pregnancy phase. Uh, as a parent to the dye solution, I feel like there is an emotional bond between the dye vet and myself. I don't wear gloves when I'm dyeing, just to feel the fabric, and also because it is safe to touch with our bare hands. When you first put them in a new bed, you can see that the shade of indigo is about this shade. And then as we progress, get a darker colour like this. And with multiple dips in different days, and when we stack the colour, we can get like a deep dark blue. After leaving the workshop feeling very motivated, uh, I realised that I had to do detours to get there. And so that was when I joined Singapore Airlines as a cabin crew. I flew in in different time of the year, just to see how they practice in different season. I helped out with their work and to understand a bit more about natural indigo. I started to see the world through the lens of indigo. Indigo existed for hundreds of years. The one thing that didn't change is how interconnected it is to nature and people. In Singapore, I believe there are other indigo dyers around with different practices. Um, but for indigo farming-wise, I haven't met any. The land scarcity is uh, one of a problem whereby I can't farm enough at one go. But I have found different spots to be at and grateful for the people who have shared the opportunity with me. My aim is to localise my ingredients and to be self-sustainable in my craft.
I was very strong-headed when I was a student last time. I always fought for the concepts that I wanted. I believe that hasn't changed, <laughs> but that has helped me to understand myself better. Felix has very clear sense of purpose and direction. As one of the very few artisans of indigo dyeing, not many people are exploring this niche area in Singapore, and he was willing to do something uncharted. We all talk about how fashion sector is the second largest polluter. Every small step counts. He has taken that small step to offer an ecological choice for the textile industry. Natural dye uses less water. It uses less energy. Sustainable, renewable source. The idea is to go in a separate direction to remember or to keep up a craft while the rest of the world are moving ahead. So whenever they want to look back again, uh, there's someone who is still holding up to a craft. I would like to progress my practice further to be more like a designer craftsman where I can explore a range of work and to experiment with more mediums and different patterns. I'm hoping to venture into daily items like furniture, products, and also I've always had interest in biomaterials. And at the end of the day, the product is able to be returned back to ground.